Today's episode of The Cantina is brought to you by Grow Generation. Whether you're at the Death Star or the Senate, they have everything you need to grow right where you are. More from them later in the episode. Welcome to a galaxy far, far away. Here at the Cantina Podcast, we provide top shelf service, including rumors, leaks, news, and reviews. Come in, order a Loma Nail, and remember, no droids allowed. Well, thanks to our sponsors, Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. You're back listening at the Cantina again this week. Um, it's me, Cam Clark. Um, however, um, my co-host um, is not actually here, uh, who's usually here with me tonight, is Kel Malone. Kel can't make it tonight, but I do have Shockey. Mike, how What's you doing, mate? Good, how about you? Yeah, good, good, very good. So, um, Star Wars this week, there's been um, not a massive amount of news, but there's been a couple of key things that we can probably talk about. Yep. Um, where to start, where to start? Let's start with the Acolyte. Right, okay. so um, Leslie Headland <clears throat> um, was talking a little bit about the Acolyte again this week. Obviously, they're in the process of writing that at the moment. Get the mm-hmm. writers room together, they're, 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 getting, they're getting the scripts going. Um, and she mentioned, which kind of did raise a red flag amongst a few fans, <laughs> certainly Kyle, um, that she takes a lot of inspiration from The Phantom Menace. And <clears throat> I don't know where you stand on The Phantom Menace, but it does rank as my least favorite Star Wars film of all time. I think. Where, I think where does it sit for you? I think it's grown on me. Um, <laughs> I, don't get me wrong; it definitely has its flaws, um, and there it's it's you know the original trilogy is definitely in the top tier of it. But um, you know, like when I watched as a kid, I, I fell in love with it, and then during my teenage years in my early 20s i kind of you know had a hate for it and now i don't know what it, it's like coming full circle i've kind of learned to <laughs> to like it or you know i wouldn't say I think there's definitely a lot of fans in that position and yeah. um, not quite there myself at the moment yeah. um but uh you know i can't I have a lot of issues that I had with uh, the Phantom Menace were not about the ideas behind it it was how they put it forward so for right. example uh, and Kel and I agreed they made Anakin too young in The Phantom Menace that mm-hmm. if he was a little bit older a little bit closer in age to Natalie Portman's character that you know you could start to that age where you start to get crushes on girls and stuff like that whereas I, I felt like they made Anakin just a little bit too young for all that to kind of really work but yeah it's a shame um, that they didn't have uh Hayden Christensen um you know then I think if Hayden Christensen I mean, had yeah been, if he had been a young teenager as Anakin because you know pretty much he was in his his teens um when he did Attack of the Clones so if they got him for the Phantom Menace which would have been you know a couple years earlier I think that would have been a perfect and it, it, you would have seen the growth of Anakin better throughout the three movies instead of um I can't I can't and remember this, I mean the maybe, maybe wouldn't have quite get the 10 year gap they wanted yeah. to mm-hmm. ahead which but you know I don't know if it actually needed a 10 year gap I don't think it really place. matters yeah anyway but that's not really what kind of Leslie Hedlund was talking about though what she was talking about was how many questions were raised when she watched The Phantom Menace that then stuck in her head. So, you know, why are they so afraid of Anakin? You know, when, mm-hmm. when Qui-Gon says, I'm going to train this guy and make the chosen one, why are they like, oh, well, this, this, this is maybe not a good idea. Right. And, um, and why, you know, are they so dismissive of the fact that the Sith could be back, you know? So when at first they hear about Darth Maul, they say, oh, the Sith couldn't have returned without us knowing about it, you know? So she kind of wanted to get into answer those questions if you like and if, if her thing's set well well we don't know exactly when it's set but we're guessing something maybe between 100 and 200 years before the phantom menace right then we're not quite in sort of palpatine territory yet it would be whatever happened before that kind of thing so really the only character that we could possibly see would be would be yoda wouldn't it um from the series so yeah from it kind yeah. of to me it doesn't really raise a red flag because um because I, I'm interested in that as well. Do you know what I mean? Because it doesn't matter if the film was good or bad. The things that she was asking the questions of kind of made sense to me. Does that? Does that right. And I think I think you're 
we're in the time period of Yoda's prime of uh, Jedi, but also, I mean, I think we're going to see, I think a lot of people have guessed that we probably will see like Darth Plagueis because it's of the time frame. Um, you know, I, mean, I would like to see that character. I must admit. Yeah, I think, but I don't know if it's too early or you know for them or something like that. By that point, it's hard to say. But then, if Darth Plagueis was supposed to have lived for you know a very long time, it would it would kind of right. Yeah. Who I, knows? I, but I'd like to see it. Yeah, and I I gotta believe that. And like what I took from this was that she wants to get into the deep core of the Sith and, and you know why why the Sith are so you know anti Jedi and, and everything mm. against it so for me it's kind of more or less you know we're I think we're gonna even though it's set a hundred to what 150 years prior to um uh, Phantom Menace but we think so we, we yeah. don't have an exact figure that's just a guesstimate at the moment yeah, but, yeah. that's I, I still think we're going to see something earlier than that like kind of a I don't know if it's going to be flashbacks or, or you know a prologue for all this but you got to go mm. way way back because the Sith didn't start with Plagueis I mean it's generations it's yeah, it was of years. Darth Bane and yeah. instituted yeah. mm-hmm. the rule of two and you can you kind of feel with some of the stuff that they've been doing, especially the books they've been re-releasing, that they kind of maybe want to get into Darth Bane at some point. Right. So there could there could be some teases um, of of how that began, you know, some mention of Darth Bane, which could then possibly open itself up in a future project that goes back even further. I mean, that would be pretty cool. Right. Um, and then what was the other? Oh, so this was another theory I've seen being bounced around, is that the Acolyte is really the the kind of the remake of knights of the old republic in real form and that this will be um uh the like kind of the story of revan you know go you know going to to the dark side under what was it darth uh darth malik and stuff so um i've seen that kind of jumped around and stuff but i mean right it's it's all up in the air but i'm the one thing i do appreciate from the Phantom Menace was kind of the, the mystery of the, the the Sith. You know, we knew that Palpatine was behind everything right off the bat, but yeah. we didn't know where Maul came from. We didn't know exactly how they were all linked together and stuff. And so that's where I think, to me, that's it's a good sign. You know, I know that Kyle is always skeptical, but for me, it's a good sign of saying, let's answer these questions. Let's go back and see how did things line up so that we get the rule of two, we get, you know, the... Uh, the use of um, Maul's um, oh, they're not the Night Sisters, but the the I can't think of the. Well, he he was the Night Sisters of Dathomir's where he Dathomir's, came yeah. from yeah um, the Dathomir's. initially right right yeah um, the Dathomir's and how if you know any connections to there why you know why would Palpatine you know I I know they talked about it a little bit in the Clone Wars uh, with Dooku and. Um, and Dooku trying to overthrow Palpatine or at the Darth Sidious um, and then um, recruiting. Oh, Asajj Ventress. Yeah, Asajj Ventress. That's right. Yep. And then. Um, yeah, which is kind of the Sith thing, isn't it? So the, the apprentice yeah. tries to get another apprentice themselves and hopefully mm-hmm. together they take over. He becomes a new Sith Lord. That seems to be kind of the way they they do things. Right. What I remember George Lucas talking about was one of the mistakes that um, thing he made, um, sort of Palpatine made, was um, the fact that he didn't have time to go back and train somebody brand new again, kind of thing. Right. But after Maul died, so what he really should have done was he should have went and trained a new apprentice from birth, but he didn't have time to do that, and that's why he has to kind of then go for Dooku and turn a Jedi because he needs somebody now, you know, to, to kind of play that role for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, kind of obviously moves on to Anakin, which is by that point is true goal, you know. So, yeah, I think I think it still sounds interesting. I mean, who knows? It's like anything, you just have to judge it depending on what... Uh, oops, I just dropped something. Oh, no um, you know, just when it comes out, we'll just judge it by by its own merits at the end of the day. She talked a lot about representation, all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff, because she gets asked about that every time she does an interview because, you know, she is somebody who's, you know, she's obviously married to her wife um, and she gets asked all about the LB, um, 
QT stuff and, yeah. and everything like that. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that's really relevant at this moment in time. I think it's almost at this moment in time where interviewers kind of asking about that like it's the most important thing. If I was interviewing Leslie Headland, I don't think I would ask her any questions on that at all because, you know, I'd be more interested in, you know, where do you come at Star Wars? What do you think about Star Wars? That is where my interest would be is kind of see um, if she's somebody that can deliver, you know? I think it's the one that I'm the most ex- uh, excited, intrigued about out of all the projects, you know, um, mm-hmm. that, are, that have been announced that are coming up. This is the one, because, I mean, in all honesty, this is the first time where we are looking at the dark side of the force. Um, Cause all the Hopefully, movies. Yeah. That's what it seems yeah. to be anyway. And that's I think the, it will be. I, I mean, agree with, yeah. I agree with you because that's something I have always wanted to see more of. And for that reason alone, that intrigues me as well. And plus it's cause it's, it's a little bit away from everything else. It's kind of just going to be its own story as yep. well. And who knows what could spawn out of that. I mean, look at the Mandalorian and what spawned it, the success of that. Exactly. An entire, basically franchise getting built up in that period of time between the original trilogy and the, and the sequel trilogy. So who knows what could be set in the kind of that period, you know, between the high Republic and the Phantom Menace as well. You know, that's a, a period absolutely right for exploration. Right. Yeah. Cause we, we haven't really gotten much into it. So. Yeah. Okay. Next thing that uh, we would have probably, we talked about last week when, you, you were on last week, were you? Yeah, no. I was on. Anyway, uh-huh. Are you on? Oh, okay. Um, so we, we talked a lot about, about Rogue Squadron, and obviously Kel and I both have some concerns around about that. Well, Patty Jenkins kind of talked a little bit about what a vision for that is. Um, this week we covered it on the site. And essentially what she was saying um, was that, you know, the base for all this, you know, she kind of shouted out to Michael A. Stackpole and then the games and the books that all kind of mm-hmm. spawned from that to do with Rogue Squadron. But she makes a point of saying, but we've, we've taken all that into a new era. And what a lot of kind of fans thought she meant by that was that we're going into a brand new era of the Star Wars universe. My, my take, and certainly some of the people on the article I wrote agreed with me, was more this era of filmmaking you know right. rather than the mm-hmm. way things were back then you know but it's unlikely they're going to set this post return of the jedi now isn't it like um like the original books were where do you think rogue squadron will actually be set what period of time do you think it's going to be um it, it, that's a really really tough question because um uh, that's a could it, you know, take place in between, you know, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, pro, you know, that's, that's, I think, everybody's safe bet. Could it go further, um, you know, into past Rise of Skywalker? Yes, you could do that. Um, that's my bet. That's yeah. my bet. And because the kind of situation that we're left in post Skywalker is kind of similar to the situation where Stackpole wrote those books originally. Uh, mm-hmm. The Empire's been defeated, but, you know, there's a lot more to go. It's a lot of work the to Republic do. The Republic is kind of is rising mm-hmm. and, you know, they've set up this squadron and these are guys that are like the elite squadron and they have to battle the remnants of the Empire and various other people that come along to, to piss them off, basically. Yeah. Um, whereas, kind of, if they went post Return of the Jedi, that's putting them right into that sort of Mandoverse, you know, mm-hmm. Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian, and everything. It, it, it kind of feels too heavy already for then for us then to have a film set in that period. I think, but who knows? Yeah, because knows you got to think sure. about it. If you go post Rise of Skywalker, it's same concept, like you said, after Return of the Jedi. Um, you, there's no more first order. The Senate had been destroyed in the first in the Force Awakens in the first sequel trilogy film. So the, yeah. the government's, you know, the uh, galactic government that is being set up is very new. And so you you got to figure, you know, some of the the bounty hunters, some of the gangs are are trying, you know, the um, galactic, you know, uh, gangs are trying to take control as much as they can before a government sets in place. So you could definitely put something like that together. Um, you know, as a 
you know, as a setting, you know, how is it going to play into, you know, a fighter pilot movie? That's, that's different, you know, cause that's every time she's, she's been interviewed and that topic comes up, she keeps on talking about it. It's going to be kind of top gun esque, you know, where it's more yeah. fighter pilot than anything else. So maybe it's kind of, I, I don't know if you ever saw the, what was the cartoon show, the resistance squadron or, uh, the animation took yeah. me off from trying it plus but i did try it once and i realized it was very much more aimed at kids rather yeah. than mm-hmm. you know even more so than the likes of the clone wars or rebels was to me right. and that that definitely turned me kind of off it um but the main thing was probably the animation still i didn't like that i didn't particularly care for any of the characters but you know, it's hard to do that in just one episode, but I kind of got the feeling just after one that, that this wasn't going to be something I liked, you know. But have yeah, you watched many of them? I watched the, I think, majority of the first season. Didn't really, uh, I didn't really pick up on it in the second season of it and stuff. But it kind of had that, you know, the training, getting into the um, the resistance and learning how to fly the X-Wings and doing, you know, mm-hmm. all fancy and stuff. So it could be something like that. Um the the kid in me wants it to be you know the the Michael Stackpole setting Return of the Jedi style Rogue Squadron. Could you do that with a wedge though? You didn't I don't. Cast I don't think wedge, you can. Yeah, I, I really don't. I, I think that that time. Whereas if moved. they did it post Skywalker, they could bring Dennis Lawson back as the the boss. Oh yeah, because he's he's still alive. He's in the final battle of the Rise of Skywalker yep. in the Millennium Falcon. So. You know, and as far as I know, I mean, he's working at the moment because I see him on certain things in British TV, but I don't think he's in anything that he would be like, oh, no, I can't join this very high profile Star Wars movie. Thanks right. very much, you know. Um, so who knows? I, I really, I, I just, I have a lot of concerns about it. What about the fact that, well, the writer was announced as well. We found out, you know, and there was a lot of debate who's going to be writing this as if it was some big mystery. Um, and it turns out it's Matthew Robinson, who probably most famous for writing Loving Monsters. Have you ever seen that film? No, like? I didn't. I have not Neither seen that. No. So <clears throat> it's hard for me to say, well, you know, I think Matt, when I covered this story, I was like, ah, well, this is who the, the writer of Rogue Squadron is. Me. Because I don't really have anything to base that off. I've not seen Love and Monsters. I've not seen any of the other stuff he's wrote. I probably will never watch Dora the Explorer, uh, The Lost <laughs> Treasure or whatever it is, which yeah. he's one of the writers on. But, you know, there was nothing in that announcement that made me go, oh, yes, that 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 could be good. Um, he is writing the sequel to um, The Edge of Tomorrow, though. Um, right. It's called Live, Die, Repeat, Repeat. Or something mm-hmm. like that again. Um, so he's writing that at the moment. <clears throat> but I don't know which one of them would, would come first, you know, um, in terms of when, when they're going to make them and, and they're coming out. So, you know, by the time we get to see possibly the sequel to that and say, oh, that was great or that was rubbish, you know, it's going to be too late to do it with the World Squadron by right. then. And so, I, I don't know, I with writers or in, in general, I've always been... Um, like I, I kind of give them more credit than, than I think I would like say a director, or an actress, or actor, um, because th- they write to whatever job they can get, and so I guess you know that's yeah. what the. It's not like oh, I, I only want to write on Star Wars films, or I only want to write. On, you got to go where where the, you know, the money takes you. Is like Dave Filoni was doing SpongeBob SquarePants, you know, before. Um, coming on to, I mean that is true. And, Star Wars, you know so. the Russos had only done really like Community before right. they end up, and then you know we all love them now, and they made all those great Marvel movies, and it won't well not anymore, but the most successful movie all the time for a little while. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's hard to kind of you know, but whereas the opposite is when you like heard Michael Waldron was writing Loki. Right, and you know he's been involved in Rick and Morty. You think, yeah, that you know you can see the the building blocks there and why right. that makes sense. Um, but it's, I just don't see that at this point. So just that mixed with everything else and the fact that so far what I've seen for Patty Jenkins hasn't impressed me that much herself as a director either. Um, yeah, 
I can't deny I've got some concerns about that movie. I think and I hope I'm wrong. But I mean, and also too, when you put the you know when you put the name Rogue Squadron as the title, I mean that's the tough. Yes. That's really tough to to live up to, especially for the older Star Wars fans, because I mean, like you know, like you said, we you know post the original trilogy. You know, Michael Stackpole's uh, books were some of the most popular Star Wars books out there. And, and at some yeah. point, they were really, And then you're talking about, you know, one of the most iconic video games of all time um, in, in the Star Wars realm was yeah. Rogue Squadron. Anytime you're talking about flying X Wings, TIE Fighters, anything like that, you, there's a, the core Star Wars fans get excited about that. So, I mean, the hype is up here for it. We're like something like the Acolyte, where there's not really much known about it you can walk into it and say oh we'll see what happens and stuff that's right um, yeah I, I totally agree with you yeah and i wonder if that's such a good idea because like one of the, the issues i had with the sequel trilogy is the fact that they wanted to cash in the fact that this is the end and actually see if they'd have called it star wars the new fucking generation or something like that <laughs> um, episode one and they didn't like say this has to finish the story i'd have probably been a lot more forgiving of that sequel right. trilogy it was because it was trying to be the end of the entire skywalker saga that caused it a lot the of end of a story that opinion. already ended yeah it, that was mm. that was a big mistake right there it, like they it was the end of the story but the story already That's ended just what he's going to rogue squadron everybody's going to go think oh i can't wait to see this rogue squadron that was one of my favorite books and then they're going right. to sit in there and and get yeah, wonder I mean, woman 84 right, well when kyle doesn't see wedge antilles in it you know, that that's going to burn him a little bit. And, you know, and, you know, if it's a whole new, if it's a young cast or, you know, something like that, where it's like uh, old instructor recruits a bunch of young hotshot, you know, pilots and everything and it you know, has to train them. It's, that's going to be done. And I mean, that's tough. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'd more rather see, to me, Rogue Squadron and me and Kyle have talked about this before. It's kind of like when you take, already very good pilots almost in a top gun sense and you say we're going to take you to the next level and we're going yeah. to fly the toughest missions and then i want to see them on those missions i don't want it to be you know them dicking about the training academy yeah day, you know? it, 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 that's exactly it i'm with you on that i don't want to see like a new group of pilots trying to learn an x-wing i want to see like rogue squadron you're the you're the best of the best type yeah. deal top gun you know, there's a mission that you got to take care of or whatever, you know, uh, it's tough. I mean, this one's going to be, uh, I'm not saying it's going to be the the most critiqued, but this one's got, it's got a big shoes to fill, I think, because there's so much out there yes. already on Rogue Squadron. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. All right. Well, before we move on to another story, which we'll, kind of wrap up with a slightly shorter one this week's folks but just before that we're going to have a little word from our sponsors uh, grow generation take it away guys grow generation where the pros go to grow grow generation offers the best deals and discounts on the best grow products on the market grow generation serves customers across the nation and carries a wide inventory of renowned cultivation brands go to www.growgeneration.com where the pros go to grow all right, thanks for that. Um, go to Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. Um, Mike, this one, I think, will be slightly more up your street in terms of, but this is a rumour that kind of came out about Obi-Wan this week, but when I wrote it, I said, I'm not sure this is much of a rumour or just kind of stuff we already knew. So making Star Wars had kind of ran a report on the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, and lately they've, They've not really been producing much. I'm not going to get into why that is the case. Uh, if you look it up, anybody, you'll, I'm sure you'll be able to find um, that there was a few issues with the editor-in-chief, Jason Ward. Um, but during certainly the sequel trilogy, they were one of the kind of best outlets for, for getting leaks and stuff like that. But as I say, not much just now. But they said the sources had told them two key things about Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that was that a, he will go off planet at some point in the show. And I feel like we kind of already knew that anyway. And that he will fight an Inquisitor at some point within the show. And of course, that kind of leads us back to something that we've, we've covered before as well. Um, Corey, obviously, of 
KRT who are no longer doing videos anymore, but formerly of KRT was on Steel Wars, and he had said that. Um, oh, I've forgotten her name now. Uh, uh, Moses Ingram. Moses Ingram. Moses Ingram. That's it. Um, was because we knew she was training with lightsabers. We've seen the videos mm-hmm. of it, so we knew she was either playing bad guy or a Jedi, you know, on the run or something like that. And basically, he had said it's Inquisitor. She's playing Inquisitor. And you were able to confirm that with yep. our sources really, really quickly after that and just back those guys up and say, yep, she is, she's an Inquisitor. It was like, you know, you never said, oh, she will definitely fight Obi-Wan or anything like that. I kind of thought that was implied, though, myself. I think it would be a cra- it would have been crazy to have Moses Ingram playing this Inquisitor and not have her going against Obi-Wan at some point in the show. But, you know, at the end of the day, nobody had actually you know, said that that will definitely happen. And even in that report, it doesn't say it's going to be Moses Ingram's character. It just says, at some point, Obi-Wan will fight an Inquisitor. Do you have any thoughts on on that at all? Or do you know, agree with what I'm thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I basically am, like, sharing the same thoughts as you. I think these are things that were already, like, kind of confirmed. Or maybe, like, we, you know, we we talked about and you know pretty much everyone agreed upon you know first yeah, that, yeah. that kenobi is not going to be on tatooine the entire time it, i mean it just can't happen can it because how can he how can he face vader again which kathleen kennedy herself told us would happen and you've talked about this a little bit in previous yeah. can, cantina weeks um you know the things that you know about it you couldn't do that in tatooine could you right because... i think i think everybody's stuck on a new hope obi-wan kenobi being on tatooine you know and just sitting there waiting buying his time but we have to remember too that um you know obi-wan has to go train to to become one with the force so that he can you know when he dies that he becomes mm-hmm. you know a, a, a and you would have to visit different places for Correct. that for his training so you know and it, it's conceivable that the obi-wan may have to do the same thing right and you know for for Obi-Wan to be sitting so close to Luke Skywalker, you know, the, the son of Anakin and, and being that entire time wouldn't be realistic or, you know, you, you wouldn't want that to happen. We, and we also get the, I think the iconic Obi-Wan lightsaber duel in uh, Star Wars Rebels with, with uh, Darth Maul yeah. on Tatooine. So yeah. why yeah. would we have all this stuff going on in Tatooine the entire time? Yeah. You know, so I, I do I mean, think if the Inquisitors a, came to Tatooine, they found Kenobi, Vader would Vader be, would be, Vader would be ship, scouring like, the entire and, ship. Yeah. And or, before you know it, he's found, you know, you know, he knows where his adoptive brother or whatever lives. Do you know what I mean? Right. You could you could visit that place and before you know it, oh here's Luke Skywalker and boom, game's a bogey, if you like. Um so it just doesn't make sense for me that if Vader's kinda on the chase for Obi-Wan that he ever connects him with Tatooine, really. Correct. You know, in fact, it would make more sense for me if Obi-Wan, if he knew that someone was after him, he would actually leave Tatooine because that would be the safer plan because then he's got to get away from Luke to protect him rather right. than stay close to him. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's the most logical, uh, you know, s- tactic to do. You know, he, he drops off Luke. He then, you know hangs out for a little bit but then leaves has to go train maybe while he's training you know he gets tracked by one of the inquisitors which leads to you know vader confronting him again escapes and then you know goes and decides to hide out and say i'm done i'm gonna just go and be a hermit you know yeah, on time probably realizes it's sort of too dangerous to be out there um, right um you know because vader's so determined to to get him, and we learned know? from the Bad Batch how how quickly the Empire was able to transition over and to find you know people who were anti you know uh, you know they were part of the rebellion anti Empire and stuff like that. So it's not like mm-hmm. he's just gonna be able to just get on a ship and just drive anywhere and you know or fly anywhere and be like oh hey I'm here to you know to train I'm here to buy this I'm here to get that. You know, people are gonna recognize that he's a Jedi. People are gonna know that the Jedi were were targeted during this time period so mm-hmm. that, that that's definitely um i think well not necessarily old news but i think it's pretty much more and more scoopers yeah, we, we, we think yeah. it's 
it's it's legit. It's just yeah. I don't think it's astounding news because it's kind of mm. it just kind of adds a little bit of detail on something we all kind of thought was going to happen anyway. Yeah, and then Moses Ingram being an inquisitor, um, that pretty much I, I, is the the safe bet I, I would say um, for her character. Um, we've seen her, you know, training with lightsabers. That you know that's been posted on social media and stuff. Um, you know. Could it be she had, could she be a Jedi prior maybe you know type deal, um, but I think it's safe to say that you know at this time period we're looking at um, of the show you know Vader has the Inquisitors the the sisters and um, it just makes sense like that's yeah I mean this is Obi be ones what maybe five years prior to Rebels or something like that right. mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah that's about right isn't it because Rebels just kind of ends really as just before A New Hope starts right kind of thing so mm-hmm. um, yeah um, and yeah in Rebels there's plenty of Inquisitors about at that point you know so who knows I mean it's possible Obi Wan could even fight more than one Inquisitor who Good. knows but the only one we certainly seem to know about it so far is Moses Ingram and if she's training to use a lightsaber I don't think that's going to be just so that she can pull off some fancy moves against some random dudes in my opinion right it seems obvious why why would you not have her fight Obi-Wan you know I think she's going to be the one tracking and, and hunting Obi-Wan you know and then once she yeah. finds him then here's the the battle that takes place between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader so I mean, I would I would guess, and this is just a guess that at some point Obi Wan will probably kick her ass because an Inquisitor is not a Sith, um, and you know we so we see in Rebels, which is just a few years later, how quickly Obi Wan dispatches Darth Maul, who certainly was trained as a Sith, and we've saw him, you know, is certainly able to. I don't think he's quite what he was back in the Phantom Menace anymore, with the kind of metal legs and everything, but right. Certainly enough of a threat to Ahsoka. Um, and Obi-Wan just like kicks his ass in two seconds flat, you know, yeah. in Rebels. Because we got to remember is that at this point in time, Obi-Wan has finally become the full, he's no longer, he, he is a Jedi master. You know, yeah. this, he is after his. This like, is really his prime rather yep. than uh-huh. Sith kind of right. thing. Yeah, yeah he, he's really one with his emotions at this point in time. And and really able to to take all uh, all what he's learned and put it into you know one you know uh, portrayal of who he is and stuff and in his fighting style and and just the person he is and we see that in a new hope even though he's you know near the end of his his life and everything the the teachings that he's talking about the the lack of you know emotion or you know, being pissed off at Han or anything else or um you know the the lack of emotion when fighting Darth Vader again. Like this is all old for him. This is like I got this now. I know exactly what to do. Yeah. You know I'm going to toy with you enough so that my, you know my friends because your, he has no son, fear you know, of death either. Nope. You know, yeah. uh, which despite they shouldn't have had any fear. I think you know if we go back to that prequel period, the Jedi's would still have been, you know, the, well they were frightened of General Grievous when he appeared at mm-hmm. first. There was a lot of Jedi genuinely scared of them. Um, and a lot of Jedi were scared of Dooku when they, right. you know, they had to face him as well. Um, probably certainly Sidious, but you know, you just never felt like when when Obi Wan faces Vader again, he's that his only concern is Luke, right? Not himself at all, because you know he knows that you know his destiny's done at that point. You know he can mm-hmm. he can die and he can still guide Luke from beyond the grave because he's fully trained up. You know. So he's just in that completely different mind frame. Exactly, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that kind of covers pretty much all the Star Wars news that's that's been out this week. Is there anything else you want to talk about at all uh, before we wrap up? I'm just trying to look up to see if there's anything else. It was really kind of a... Besides Rogue Squadron and Acolyte, there really wasn't... At least much. there was something this week, because yeah. there's some weeks of by where there's been, been almost no mark. You know, and he always, I always compare that to Marvel. There's never a week goes by when we don't have at least one Marvel story per day, if yeah. you like. Um, but there has just been this almost radio silence about Star Wars more recently. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is so 
this has been a rumor that I, I don't buy it, but it's been thrown my way twice. And now some other, I, th- I think comicbook.com covered it. Um, but that, so I, I don't know, like, I don't even know. This is straight 100% rumor. I don't, I have not found anybody else to, to confirm this and everything. And I'm just mm-hmm. uh, more, th- I think it's more just people playing theory crafting and stuff like that. But that Omega is now going to there's going to be an older Omega in the Mandoverse. Mm-hmm. That the Bad Batch is basically setting it up so that um, you know the whole cloning process that we've seen in the Mandalorian, you know that they've been teasing yeah. in the back and the Kameen, um, the you know trying to get um, Grogu's you know metachlorians midi chlorians and stuff like that. Um, that the uh, omega is the key to that and that we're going to see that you know sometime in yeah. uh, the mandalorian and i think comic book i think it's definitely because we're, we're so early and um and the bad batch that it's hard to know where omega's character's going to go and what right. connection she could have with boba fix we know they have a connection biologically right but right so far they've never met each other they don't even know each other exists right. now, that could change before the end of season one even before all we know but but you kind of what i think is like how many years would it take for us to get to the point where they'd be happy to tell us that that this is the end of omega before they get there in the bad batch do you know what i mean right that, that's the thing i think about so if they introduce omega too quickly and the kind of manoverse side of things like let's say this is just pure, pure speculation, guys. This isn't the end we've heard at all, really. But let's just say they, they burn her into the Mandalorian season three, and we haven't even had the Bad Batch season two. That kind of spoils that that character's still alive and, and still has a, a kind of important role to play before we're kind of ready for that in that show. Does it, do you know what I mean? Right. You know, I get it too. That's I one just, of the issues I have with but Yeah, I think it's just too I could much see of connecting. It's like, happening, but. I would just don't, I wouldn't think it'd be anything soon. Yeah. So I think comicbook.com, I'm trying to look it up right now, um, is they said that she would appear in Book of Boba Fett. I don't, and I don't think so. I think it's going to be. Did they just say um, like sources, their own sources, or did they say it's more like, else? it's more kind of, the, they're taking more of the stance that I am, where it's more like rumor slash theory, could it happen, maybe type deal. Um, they're not. So they, I mean, that could be just somebody is hitting all the sites trying to get somebody to pick it up as well. You know, yeah. that does happen. Um, yeah, there, there's uh, so two two un- sources that I, I'm not, you know, great with, or you know, have, have mentioned it to me. You know, I don't buy it though. I think it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, that's just too too easy to connect all the dots together and stuff to, you know. Yeah, but. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm like. Yeah, I'm not prepared to. And jump I don't really don't want that it one either. Unless yeah. someone come out that you know, someone we trust that comes out and says, um, "Yeah, by the way, that is legit. Um, this is happening." Then that would change our point of view on it. But so far, we we don't have that, right? So no, and you know, I mean, we, we can't just believe every rumor we hear. So I think so many people are jumping on the oh well, Ahsoka made the jump. Um, you know, Boba Fett made the jump into the Manoverse. Like oh, let's have all these characters. You know, coming to the you know, yeah. I just I think it's too many. I, I kind of like the original characters. I like Mando season one with all the original characters. I don't mind an Ahsoka showing up here and there. I don't mind you know a Bo Katan. Um, you know, well, the, type the point is though, you know, like I feel that with Ahsoka, and that you know, we know that there was at one point there was plans for a Rebel sequel, and we don't really know what happened to that. And now you know, it seems as if all of that is going to play out in live action. Right. So I can kind of understand why Filoni especially feels he needs to tell the end of Ahsoka's tale, which is what happens in her search for Ezra and what happens with Thrawn. And, you know, we need to conclude all that. You can't just leave it. Mm-hmm. Well, you could leave it hanging there, but when you're looking for content to film, why, why not tell these stories? But, you know, at the moment, we just don't know if Omega is just a bad batch only thing or whether, you know, she's still going to be around at that point. I mean, it could have a tragic ending for all we know where Omega gets killed or something right. like that. I, mean, I doubt they would do that. And, you know, when it's a kid and stuff like that, it doesn't kind of feel an animated show is the right place to do that. But, um, 
but you just you just don't know. Um, I, I, whether she would come into live action, I wouldn't be against it in any way, but I wouldn't want to see that for a long time yet, you know? Correct. I, I would want to build up to that later on. So, you know, let's give these all these characters that we have brought from the animated over to live action, let's give them their time to shine before we start adding new ones all the right. time. I, the way I kind of think about I I 100% agree. I, I enjoyed the what two minutes of luke skywalker and yeah that's it you know type deal you know ah- ahsoka getting her own show 100 I, I i get that and understand that but like bo katan the use of her and the mandalorian is right amount and stuff you know mm-hmm. so yeah if it's if it becomes you know this and she whole... wasn't a major major character you know right. she was in certain arts but there was whole parts of the clone wars and rebels as well where she just wasn't involved at all so you know Kind of doesn't you know, and the, and it is a Mandalorian based story after all. Do you right. know what I mean? So it kind of makes sense her history with the dark saber, all that, based on where we think things are going. That 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 she would be involved in that, but you know, you could you could make the argument that that Omega could be connected to all that as well. But I don't think yet. You know, no, maybe maybe think, they'll tease that later on, but I don't know. What I think whatever you could do with Omega, you can just do with Boba Fett because they're basically identical. They're there's both direct clones of Django, so the cloning process well, that yeah. Unless yeah. there is something different about Omega that we don't know yet. The clones right, don't true. even know yet, and it's just not been introduced in the Bad Batch. You know, and early on there was a lot of people wondered whether she could be the key to cloning a Jedi because she's got some sort of force abilities which she's not learned to manifest. And I'm not saying that's what they're going to do, but we can't discount it completely at the moment right. just because none of the characters have told us that that's because Lama Sue, all these kind of, they've not told us what they're thinking about the character yet. All we've heard is that little bit of kind of um, what the clones think that she is and then right. the fact that they want her back, you know? No, I, I guess definitely... we might find out more by the end of the season. Yeah, I, it's, I think it's one of those and this has been one of a, a longer season because what it goes, we still have like what five more episodes and stuff. So yeah, so we're just yeah. over, like we're just we're past the half halfway point. point. Oh yeah, so, so six, yeah. 16 episodes in total. Yeah. It is yeah, so, yeah, so which is it's kind of not that uncommon for an animated series. To be fair, um, I didn't I didn't think it was going to be that long because uh, what we only got what did we get twelve episodes with the the last season of the Clone Wars. So yeah, yeah, yeah the, I, I was, was gonna... shorter to be fair, yeah. but the old ones were like when it was on the networks, they were oh, yeah, it was like 24, yeah, yeah, 22, 24 like episodes. So Rebels was anyway, but you know, there's various different ways to tell a story, and, and right. you know, I suppose it just comes down to you know, that something like Kevin Feige's talked about himself is that you don't always have to do the same thing, you know. Right. So one one series can be longer than another, so there's nothing to say bad backs could be. The next series is only seven episodes and they're 40 minute episodes. You know, they can do whatever the hell they want and still call it a season and it doesn't really matter in streaming because they're not having to fit into some network schedule. You know, there's no, no you're exactly any right. Concerns about that now. The beauty of having streaming services now. Yeah, we live in a, a golden age. We just hope <laughs> the stories kind of, um, the talents that they kind of, fill it out for us i suppose right all right mike uh we'll wrap that uh, up there um guys listen every friday there's a cantina out uh myself and kel usually are always there mike will join us as often as he can uh, to get his point of view on things as well um and just check out all the stuff that we've got on lrmonline.com um that's where mike and i work for and uh you know, our, our right stories during weekdays. Uh, we we'll cover all the rumors, Marvel, Star Wars. If you're more into podcasts, Kyle is involved with numerous different podcasts, including the Daily Call, which used to be our end mornings. We've got Marvel Multiverse Mondays, which is currently Marvel Multiverse Thursdays because Thursday, yep. um, <laughs> the Loki's because, now uh, coming just because Loki's in a Wednesday and you know that and all Disney Plus shows are going to be in a Wednesday that they're going to be released from now on we've heard um, what else have we got we've got you know Geek Scholars we've got Breaking Geek um, Netflix and, and we've got Netflix and Chill we've got Anim- Anim- as Anniversal 
anime so I don't uh, yeah, know anime, anime versal, do anime, yep. so, <laughs> anime <laughs> versal. <laughs> um, so there's tons of stuff um, and it's very very easy to find wherever you get podcasts Mike how can people reach you online if they want to chat um, pretty much uh, at LRM underscore exclusive is the um, main twitter account that we use and you can just DM me or you know tag me on there and you can find me at LRM underscore cam uh, on my own personal account but you know obviously you can reach out to me on the LRM exclusive as well because we'll pick it up on there as well thanks for listening and once again as Kel usually says I'll do it this week may the force be with you